Whether you're a novice, a weekend warrior, or a veteran off-roader, it doesn't take long to understand that your tires are one of the most important tools to have on your vehicle, big or small. Being able to inflate and deflate your tires is the most effective way to guarantee your off-road comfort as well as traction. But doing it with a single lead sometimes becomes the most time-consuming process of your adventure. You want to spend more time adventuring and less time inflating and deflating on your adventures? I have a solution for that. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to another install video here on the Gator Overland channel. I'm John, and if you saw our previous episode, we installed the 813 fabrication and design behind the rear seat bracket for your single or twin ARB compressor. And I've been super satisfied with the convenience, everything about it. But when it comes to off-roading or on-roading, there's a big inconvenience that you find, and it's inflating and deflating with a single lead. You want to solve your inflation, deflation, time consumption and spend more time on the trail as opposed to inflating and deflating. Everything you need to know is in this bag right here. So if you want to figure out how to do it at home, stick around. And if you're wondering, yes, these are 37s. That happened. <laughs> All right, there it is. That is the mock-up of our inflate deflate system. I went to the hardware store, got 50 foot of 3 8 size rope and just basically electrical taped it to various fittings and whatnot to kind of simulate what I will do so I can finite my cut lengths of my air hose before even beginning and you know measure twice cut once type thing. This will be the fun part of the project and I hope it holds true. This is just a three-way manifold and instead of having a chuck here I replaced it with a quarter inch MPT to valve stem and I put on a coyote deflator. So if it works out right be able to open up this valve, pull the pin, deflate all four tires to specify will go 12 to 15 psi and as you can see this is the configuration that would be the location of where the air compressor is in the vehicle back corner of the driver's side and i had originally configured it to be eight foot out front and six and a half feet out back to complement the uh, center of the vehicle there not being dead center but at eight this way and six and a half this way i thought man i'm gonna have a hard time trying to make sure that I do it both ways. So why not make them equal? And on top of that, have an accessory line that I can go over to other vehicles. Eight feet, eight feet, make 16 feet, and that's pretty much every wheelbase of any other vehicle. I could help out anybody going down the road just by adapting the longer hose to my actual air inflate deflate system. So with that said, let's turn this thing into the real thing. And just like that, ah, that's it. That was simple enough. Well, Job well done. Actually, no, I'm gonna go back through and show you how I did everything. When it comes to configuring your air hose system, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can go very economical, spending only 50 to 80 cents for these side crimp couplings, a few extra dollars more for doing a hose clamp, or you can go all the way up and do the clean look with the ferrules. I opted for the Flexzilla. It's a type of hybrid hose, which maintains this floppy, any which way mobility down to negative 40 PSI. You can't do that with your normal air hose. This is just some extra air hose I had for demonstration. But this runs about somewhere in between high of a dollar to a dollar a foot if you were to use it on a spool. Some places like AutoZone sell this just on a big spool and you can cut it out. I went ahead and got 50 feet, a little shy of four, around 40, $45 somewhere in there. I'll leave a description below for all these materials, whether it be Amazon or what to get at your local hardware store. All right, so as you can see here, I've explained that there's a few different ways. You can even use wire to wrap this up, but we want this to be a nice clean look. What you do not want to use for cutting any of your hoses is a set of angle cutters like this. It will cut it at an angle and you won't get a good seat on the back side of the barb, as you can see here. All right, I'm gonna take a moment to demonstrate how each one of these fittings work for putting together your air connections and leave it up to you to make your decision on how economical or high end you wanna go with it. You want to have a bottle of soapy water or bowl, something that you can dip the fittings in to make them a little bit more lubricant. Uh, side fitting or side crimps, you want to use a pair of end cutters like this. For a set of hose clamps, a lot of people don't know that one of these adjustable screwdrivers, which are pretty good for everything, actually has a hex head in it and works great for doing your hose clamps there. And then ferrules, you would be required to have a set of ferrule crimps, which is basically vice grips that have a little indent or detent, not one of those, and it crimps down and it makes a perfect little line as you go across. 
So we'll start with the side crimps there. Go ahead and hit it with some soapy water there. Get it all nice and flush down there at the end, as you can see there. I'm going to go ahead and slide down the side crimps. And where you want to do it, make sure you're on the barb midway or so. I mean, if you think about it, it's about midway on the barb there. So make sure it's nice and even. Come with your side crimps and just give it a little pinch. Not so much hard the first time. Come over on the second side, get that one nice and tight, and then come back and finish up on there. And then that makes for a good solid connection. All right, with the hose clamps, you take your barb, spray it with water, soapy water, same thing. Fit it on up in there, put your hose clamp, slide it on there like that, and then just tighten down as normal. Just make sure it's about the same length back there, middle of the barb, and you should be good to go. Moving on to the ferrule. It's a little bit different process, more or less this little brass fitting here. I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate our barb. The difference with the ferrule is you will slide it onto the hose first, as you can see right there, comes through, and then you'll take and stick your barb fitting in just like that. Make sure that it's nice and flush. See how that? Then you'll just take your ferrule clamps do that, lock it out, and you'll turn it 90 degrees. Turn it 90 degrees. Just do that a handful of times. Typically one round will do just fine. Now do keep in mind, this is a .690 ferrule. As you can see, it's a little bit sloppy on the back side. For the Flexzilla, you want to use a .635 ID. I ended up finding some 0.635s and 0.659s, and it's hard to tell the difference. 0.690 is going to be a little bit loose on the back side. You probably want to go as close to 0.635 as possible, but this will work. That's a nice solid fitting on here. It's definitely crimped, but back here would have room for getting debris and other things on there. So definitely go with a smaller one. The advantage of the ferrule, you can see that this is one extra thing for you to get caught on equipment and dragging around. Same thing with these right here. This just makes for a good, clean factory look. All right, let's get started cutting. Again, this is 3 8 size Flexzilla hose. It's a hybrid hose capable of up to 300 PSI. We're going to do four lengths at eight feet long, 32 feet worth. I really love this hose. It's so limber. For those of you who are working by yourself, you need an extra set of hands to make sure things work out. You get a pair of vice grips, put it on the eight foot mark, get your anything that can cut straight, could be a razor blade, PVC cutters, anything like that. Again, this thing doesn't have to be perfect, but you put your PVC cutters on there, come to eight foot, boom, that's your first length. Repeat this three more times. You want to do two six foot lengths, and this is the connection that goes to both sides, left side and the right side from the compressor. Now that you have your four eighths done, your two sixes done, that amounts to about 44 feet. You should have about six feet left over to do whatever you want to. This is the part that's going to connect the compressor to the three-way manifold. I'm going to do two feet here, but you're open to do anything you want here, and you'll have about four feet somewhere in there of extra line for splicing if anything gets kink cut, tethered. Everything you see here are the components you need to complete your inflate deflate system. I have nine ferrules here, and if you're not using the ferrule system, you'll need nine side crimps or nine hose clamps, and it doesn't hurt to have an extra amount of those just to have in your kit for any snags, breaks, cuts, or anything like that. I went with a full circumferential lock-on chuck that goes on to all four wheels as opposed to using the ARB, which functions just on the side of the valve stem. This will guarantee that we have a full lock for pressure up and down. For my kit, I opted to go with the Flexzilla Pro upgrade. It allows you to repair any situation where you should have any cuts or snags. So you slide this collar down over the tube like that, put the barb on the inside just like that, and then Do that with the coupler and then come back through and fully tighten and you've either repaired or just made your own custom link fitting. I think that's great. It sure beats a ferrule and any one of those other. All right, we got our first eight foot length. I'll give the example of how to go from the back tire, for example, 
through the hose up to the ferrule and then the T. Don't forget that soapy water works wonders. I'm gonna go ahead and soap up our barb. Set that out of the way. First step, put on your kink protector. Pretty simple, just like that, slide that down. Put on your collar with the threads facing out, just like that, and then put your lubed up nipple barb, just like that. Slide this dude on up there. And you won't need Teflon tape for this fitting, but you will need it for all your other fittings going on the end of here. So as mentioned before in other videos, always take your threads in your left hand facing to the inside of you. Lay the threads or the thread tape over the top. And just as you do that, it winds tighter. If you do it that way, you actually turn the fitting in, it won't unwind the thread tape either. So as you think of that way, it does two birds, one stone. It's great stuff. So that's going to go on there just like that. And then once I tighten everything up, that goes up and you have a finished product right there. We'll just do that for all the rest of them. It's time for the T fitting. So what you'll do is you take your ferrule and slide it on your hose just like that. Take your T. Go ahead and get a little bit of soapy water on there. That way it slides in just nice. Boom. Just like that. You take your ferrule crimps, clamps, and go make sure they're tight. There's one. And it'll make a nice little indent in the, the metal there. And you turn it 90 degrees. You can easily see 90 degrees here. Everything you see here is to configure the manifold setup. And my plan for the manifold setup is to have one inlet to go to two outlets and have my deflator option here in the middle, or just cap it off and have no use for it. But theoretically, I should be able to take one of these Coyote deflators and attach it to one of the air inlets for like a tire valve and be able to pull and deflate all to whatever preset it is. It may take a little bit extra time, but it saves from having to bend over at each wheel. So that's the plan. This chuck is just a simple three-way. You could run air compressor, air nail, finishing nailers, or anything like that off of a three-way like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this little coupler here and this coupler here. Now that we have those fittings out that we're not going to use with the manifold, let's explain some of the parts here. This right here is the ARB three-way. Basically, it would thread into the ARB. You'd be able to put your pressure switch and your chuck coupler right there. It's quarter MPT, quarter MPT female, and one male. That we are going to do right here into the back side, not the three-way side, but the single inside. And what that's going to do, it's going to hold our gauge. We're going to put our gauge, of course gauges this small typically come with a 1 8 thread MPT there. So you'll have to get a 1 8 thread MPT by a quarter inch reducing bushing. And that's going to go right there. And you want to make sure that the PSI inlet for reading is down matching where the air is coming in from, just like that. And what we're going to do is put on our inlet valve. It's a quarter inch MPT male by female. Basically, this will go into the air compressor from here. That's what's going to go right here. Once that connects on, as soon as that opens up, it'll see that the lines are empty and it'll start filling because of the pressure switch. Our other valve, which is going to be our on off for our decompression or our deflate. Get that just there just for idea. And then we're going to go in with our tire valve set up there. So it is kind of big. There might be another option that I'll do later on. These deflate systems are great. Basically, it's just going to go on. Oops. Right here, you have the option of leaving it on or not, but basically pulling out like that, it'll deflate all four tires at the same time until they reach 12 PSI, 15 PSI. I also wanted to mention that even though we are using the deflator, I'm going to go ahead and remove this valve core. That way, unfortunately, if you were to open this and close this with the valve core still in there, obviously it would not deflate. 
But with that valve core removed, there's no restriction to the orifice there. So if the deflator is actually on there, the valve core will be replaced on off with this right here. So we'll have maximum output through that one little orifice there. Don't forget your fittings here. Your actual chucks are an M style fitting. ARB doesn't specify what type of chuck it is. There's M fittings, there's H fittings, there's T fittings. T fittings look like an M fitting, but they're longer, T for tall, I guess. But you just, boom. And now we have our manifold setup. So I'm gonna get all this stuff straightened up and we'll be good to go. I went ahead and kind of 45 the gauge here. I didn't want it sticking straight up because it seemed like it was kind of just obtuse and just random off into the thing. I figured it'd be better protected somewhat in a streamline like that out to the side and it could still be red. So we'll have our air chuck this way and then we'll do our other one out to that side. And basically this is the on switch pressure in and then whenever you turn it off whatever pressure is in the line is typically what's going to be in the tires and it'll read right there so you'll be able to go oh 25 psi open up 30 psi and then what have you so that's what we'll do there but this right here will just be a quick detach that'll go into a hose bag and this will just have to be set up just kind of carefully where you don't damage the gauge and if not I mean the gauges are only about six bucks so that's that. Sure, being able to inflate and deflate all four tires at the same time is super convenient, but one of the biggest advantages of a four-way inflate deflate system is the auto equalization properties between all the tires. And what I mean by that, you connect all chucks at the same time between this manifold right here, all the tires have begun to either deflate or inflate themselves to equalize the pressure. It doesn't matter if you had 35 PSI, 32 PSI, 31 PSI, they're all by the end of it going to equalize each other. But here's the trail tip. If you end up having a situation where your air compressor has gone out on you and you've only inflated back to 20 PSI here and you have say 40 PSI in the back, that's a 20 PSI differential and you don't want to get on the highway with that kind of PSI going in the front. So what you can do is actually connect the rear tire to the front tire, that 20 pound differential, divide that by two, 10 PSI. You'd expect 10 PSI to come out and go into this tire and that will equalize out to about 30 PSI. But with that said, don't forget, you have a 40 to 50 PSI auxiliary tank, your spare tire, chilling underneath the bed. You don't want to deplete your spare all the way, but instead of deflating one of your actual tires, you could utilize your spare tire to equalize pressure into one of your low tires and get yourself off the trail or on the road. Before we begin our inflate deflate time analysis, I wanted to go over something that's really important to consider when choosing your air compressor, the duty cycle. All air compressors have a duty cycle rating, whether it be 25%, 30%, some are 50%, some are 100%. But what is a duty cycle? A duty cycle is the amount of time that a compressor can operate within a given period of time without requiring any rest. So for instance, ARB, the single compressor, is a 50% duty cycle. The twin is a 100% duty cycle. So I called ARB up, asked them what is the length of time at which this 50% is based. And believe it or not, it's one hour. So a 50% duty cycle over one hour, yes, divide that by half, that means the single compressor can operate for 30 minutes without being stopped to cool off. And with the twin, you guessed it, it's continuous running, up for the whole hour or more at least. And this guarantees proper operation without overheating, longevity of parts, without failure. And pretty much plain and simple. Most of the higher end models have resistors or a temperature shutoff to keep them from running too hot to where you could actually have a meltdown or at least something can melt. <laughs> but to consider, we have a single compressor, we have 37 inch tires, anything over 35 as mentioned before in my previous video, it should probably require a twin compressor. But for that matter, 30 minutes. That's what we have. You don't want to go longer than 30 minutes with your ARB single compressor, whether it's with 37 inch tires or anything for that matter. As for the twin, rock and roll. That thing doesn't have to stop. All right, I've been thinking about it and here's where I'm gonna do everyone watching a huge favor. I'm not gonna show the time of me doing the manual deflation and inflation because that'll be just a big waste of time on your end. What you wanna know is the numbers at the end. So what I'm gonna do briefly is just go over how to manually deflate and then individually inflate. And then I'm gonna show how to connect the four way and show how you deflate everything and then inflate everything. 
and I figure it's gonna save both of us a little bit of time. I'll do the sweating, you do the watching, and we'll be through this hill pretty soon. And then I'll do a detailed analysis explaining what exactly happened throughout the whole process. So stick around. All right, manual deflation. What you wanna do is remove your valve stem cap there, and you're gonna utilize the button on the back side of your pressure gauge here. We're gonna check our pressure first. We're at 30 PSI, and then you stick that button up against the core and it begins to deflate, you kind of put it at an angle. If you hit it just right, you can actually make it attached to there and it'll just kind of hang off there. But periodically you want to check your deflation. And speaking of that, once you deflate to the tire pressure desired, make sure you mark your time. Because if it was three minutes to deflate your one tire, you can take that right on the inside of your door jam next to the sticker of your VIN number and whatnot. And you will always have that reference for three minutes to deflate. Or if you're doing the four way, you can do it however many minutes it's to deflate all four. Just a little trail thought to put that on there. Manual inflation or individual inflation. There is a little tooth here and that tooth grabs onto the threads of the valve stem. You just shove that dude on there like that and it's going as it goes. Then don't forget to periodically check to make sure you're at your desired pressure and then you move on to the next wheel. It's that process times four and whatever the amount of time it takes to do one of these inflate or deflate, you can multiply that times four and that's about what it's gonna take. QND, what does it stand for? Quick inflate deflate. I figured that was pretty keen on that. Quick in deflate, I don't know. It might be some kind of catchy phrase, but this bag works perfect. It's by Bucket Boss. I don't think it's anything specific for this. It's more like a jumper cable bag, but I did all my dimensions of it stacked and everything prior to ordering this. It was $19. I'll have a link for it below but it holds everything you'll need right there. Look at that, all kit and caboodle right there. So we have our inflate deflate system here, separated out. You have your manifold that we just built, and then we have our other two things we have there set up. These are just some inexpensive Velcro straps that we have. All right, what to do first? You put this in the vehicle. All right, now that you've already put your manifold in the truck, next step is to stage your lines. I find that grabbing it right here at the three-way, just letting it fall out, it detangles itself that quick. Go in with your main lead to the inside of the vehicle. It doesn't matter which one you go with out here. Just kind of lay it out there in front of your wheel. And do it like that. You don't want to connect them yet without connecting it to the manifold or it'll just spew out. So go do the other side. Next, you want to take your manifold, make sure both of your valves are closed and attach your couplers. You know, now thinking about it, I'm probably gonna put ARB couplers here because they're a positive release and all you gotta do is push in and push out as opposed to having to pull these things in. They don't just go in. So just word of the wise, that's a, an upgrade that I already see coming. So now that your valves are completely closed and everything, you will go and connect them to your tires. All right, connecting your four-way. You wanna make sure that it's in the open position. This is closed, this is open right here. As you can see, there's three claws in there that have a positive grab on all sides of the valve stem as opposed to the individual ARB one, which just has a single claw. So you're just gonna put it on the threads, pop it forward, and it's that simple. What's great about it is when this thing is off, it's not going to leak. Whether you're connected to the air compressor or to another tire, it will not come out of this valve, which is great. So it's just as simple as popping it on, boom. And then just like that, you pop it off, done. All right, now that your tires are all connected, it's time to deflate. Right now you have a positive pressure in there, which is in between 20 and 40, which would be 30. To deflate, you don't connect it to this, obviously. You just leave this open. This is your open orifice. You can hang it outside of the vehicle or wherever you wanna do, but for the purposes of right now, I'm just gonna let it right here. And you open up the valve, the same valve you would open up if you wanted to actually inflate, but with it connected. So, there you go. You do that for an amount of time. In my case, it was about five minutes to deflate all 437s. All right, so you've just deflated to your desired pressure and it's time to inflate after a trail ride. Check your PSI, make sure you're you got positive air or connection, all your tires are equalized, and just stick that bad boy into your ARB. You wanna make sure your vehicle's running before you start your ARB. That way you have optimum output for your air compressor motor. It's not to say that you can't use it just in accessory mode if you're just doing a quick pinch stuff, but you definitely wanna have it on for optimum output. So now that you're connected, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our ARB. Live 
line is primed and then we're going to go ahead and turn it on and just like that you watch the gauge once you get the desired pressure shut that dude off turn off your gauge and you're done time to hit the road all right so we just completed our 12 minute inflation and i went ahead and checked the temperature of the top of the air compressor head and it was at 199 197 degrees the rest of the unit was between 120 and 130. the airline going out to the compressor inlet or where the hose is connected to was at about 90 degrees which is a little less than ambient temperature right now it's about 100 outside right now but uh anywhere around i checked the temperature and it was between 95 and 100 degrees and that's the back wall and everything so even though that thing was at around 200 degrees fahrenheit it was still in the area enough ventilation and non-contacting so it's something to just be aware of you don't want to have things sitting up against it that could melt but the interior of those units do have a shut off they will not get too hot to well to where they will melt down just something to be aware of so all right, you just got done inflating or deflating, however you're wanting to say it, and you're wanting to put everything up. Here's the devised way to put it all back together. You're gonna take your T like that, just keep it together, and keep rolling it in into a ball, just like that, kinda helps itself out the whole way. Boom, look at that. And then, just take your strap, Here's how you pack it away, or at least how I've devised it. Put one in, take your gauge, put it down in the middle. That way it's protected by all the sponge of everything else. And obviously this one comes in to follow. And this bag couldn't have been a better selection of size because it is just that simple. Now see, that wasn't so bad. Got the analysis taken care of, got the tires switched out, got all these numbers here for you. What do you say we talk about some numbers? I'm gonna put this same spreadsheet up here on the screen while I'm talking about. So we have the individual time to deflate from 30 PSI to 12 PSI, which was the manual deflation. 33 inch tire, it took 10 minutes and 33 seconds to do all the tires. For the 37 inch tire, it took 12 minutes and 42 seconds. That's a time differential from the 33 to the 37 of two minutes and nine seconds. The four way deflate time from 30 PSI to 12 PSI for the 33 inch tire was one minute and 58 seconds. The 37 inch tire was five minutes. That's a time differential between the 33 and the 37 of three minutes and two seconds. The four way versus manual deflate time savings, just deflating your 33 inch tire, you've saved eight minutes and 35 seconds of trail time. 37 inch tire, you saved seven minutes and 42 seconds of trail time. Time differential of time savings between 33 and 37, you're looking at 53 seconds, just add a minute between 33 deflating and 37 deflating, which is pretty cool to think about. Let's see how that little single ARB compressor did for us. Individual time to inflate 12 PSI to 30, we're just using the manual single lead. 33 inch tire was eight minutes and 50 seconds. The 37 inch tire was 12 minutes and 44 seconds. That's a time differential between three, 33 and 37 of three minutes and 54 seconds. One everybody's been waiting for. The four-way. The four-way time to inflate from 12 PSI to 30 PSI for the 33 inch tire was four minutes and 17 seconds. 37 inch tire was nine minutes flat. That's a time differential between the two of about four minutes and 43 seconds. Now, the time savings of the four-way versus the manual. 33 inch tire, you're saving yourself four minutes and 33 seconds of inflating trail time. 37 inch tires is about three minutes and 44 seconds of inflating trail time which is a time differential of 49 seconds. Remember the deflation rate time difference between the two, using the four-way was about a minute. You're still looking at a minute between these two. It's interesting, isn't it? 33, 37, one minute difference. I'd be right behind you in these 37s if you had your stock tires. Now, the total time delta, here we go. Individual time to inflate and deflate manually. 33 inch tires took 19 minutes and 23 seconds. The 37 inch tires took 25 minutes and 26 seconds. All right, four way, total time to deflate and inflate. 33 inch tire was six minutes and 15 seconds. 37 inch tires with 14 minutes flat. That's a time differential of seven minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, it's kind of a spread. But now let's talk about the overall time savings, the four way versus the manual total time savings. If you're using the four way, both inflate and deflate, you're saving yourself 13 minutes in the 33 
than the manual deflation and inflation individually. The 37s, you're saving yourself 11 minutes and 26 seconds of trail time all throughout the day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner happen, and that time differential is only one minute and 42 seconds between the two overall. So you've only lost a minute between a 33 and a 37 using the four-way. And that's about it. Four-way does a hell of a job. Oh, this guy? No, we won't worry about this guy. That's actually the time I set aside to do the four-way with the Coyote deflator. And though it does work, it works really well. 30 PSI, all of them equally stopped at 12 PSI, but it took 22 minutes to do it. And that, you add in the nine minutes it takes to inflate with a single compressor, it's just, that's 31 minutes. That's just not, that's a lot of time. So I did actually contact Coyote Deflator to see if there's any way that I could alter without messing up the deflator or defacing the deflator. He asked me what my contraption was and he said, you know what, I might have an idea for you. And he's gonna send it in the mail and if it ends up working, it'll be in a future video. But with all this said, all this is based on a single compressor inflation. If you're going with the ARB twin, you can take all my numbers and pretty much chop them in half. You got twice the amount of compressor, twice the amount of output, half the amount of time. Keep that in mind. If you enjoyed today's video, found it informative or helpful in making your decision to construct your own four-way inflate deflate system, give us a big thumbs up. Let us know how we're doing. If you're curious about any of the components we use to construct this thing, check the description below. For a heads up on any future installs or adventures, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, and you can follow us along our journey. Remember, we at Gator Overland encourage each and every one of you to take a daily moment to unplug and reconnect with the outdoors, even if it's just for a few minutes. And as always, we thank you for watching. Have fun, keep it safe, and just go. Thanks, y'all.